Hey there YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to connect the Robox Pro to your Wi-Fi network and then by extension of that to a computer. So in order to do this process you're going to need the latest version of Automaker which in my case is 3.0.1. I believe 3 and up support the Robox Pro. So once you've downloaded Automaker you'll be greeted with this screen after the terms and conditions. But don't worry about it, you've got some things you need to do on the Robox. So on the Robox you'll be greeted with this screen. This is the home screen, the initial screen from when the printer powers on. And you'll notice in the top it gives the name of the printer and it gives an IP address. That's because this printer is currently connected to the Wi-Fi. Now, you won't, it'll say unknown or it won't give an IP address if you're not connected to the Wi-Fi. So that's how you know if it's not connected to the network. So to connect to Wi-Fi, you click on that icon and then you click on the gear icon and then you have wireless settings. And if you tap on that, the screen will load up. Now, this printer is already connected to the Wi-Fi, which is why it's showing our Wi-Fi name, Science24. It auto-populates the Wi-Fi name if it's already connected to a network, but it doesn't populate it if it's not connected. So it's quite easy to tell if the printer is actually connected to the Wi-Fi network through this method. And thankfully, they do, it does that because there is literally no other screen that tells you if it's connected to the Wi-Fi or not, other than the IP address, which actually leaves this IP address up even if it's not connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, I think these are just teething issues because it is a prototype anyway. Well, not prototype, but it's an early version of the software. So you'll have to type in your SSID. You'll notice this pretty small, pretty bad to use keyboard so what I recommend is you plug a keyboard into the USB port this is a direct port to the Raspberry Pi inside the printer which means you can use a keyboard or mouse which is a god save so keyboard or mouse whatever you type in the password and you type in the SSID and then once you've done that you can scroll down and hit that save icon now you'll actually have to tap that icon twice because the first time you tap it the keyboard will disappear and the icon will turn blue, but it won't actually click. You have to tap it twice. Um, just uh, a, a bit of an oversight in the software design, I guess, unfortunately, but uh, whatever, you know, again, early design. So you tap the icon twice, and up the top, after a little while, it will say Wi-Fi settings saved or Wi-Fi save OK. That doesn't mean it's actually connected to the Wi-Fi, and in fact, it won't connect to the Wi-Fi at that point. And what you'll notice is if you exit the screen, so you see this whole double tap thing, and then come back again, it will actually completely lose all of the stuff you typed in. But don't worry about it. What you need to do is type in the SSID and the password, save it, and so when it says up there that it's saved, then you need to restart the printer. I don't know why you have to restart the printer to connect to a different Wi-Fi network, but that's just what they expect, so that's what you have to do. Um, it's a real shame that you can't pick from a list of Wi-Fi networks and then type in the password. Um, it's a bit of a pain to have to enter in the SSID, but it's not terrible. Uh, but it's, again, not necessarily very user-friendly to people who aren't aware what it means when it says SSID. Uh, but whatever, you know, problems, meh. So, the first time I connected the printer to the Wi-Fi, I connected it to uh, one of our networks called The Basement. Um, and whenever I tried to connect the computer to the printer's IP address, um, it wouldn't work, it didn't detect the printer. As it turns out, uh, our basement Wi-Fi network uh, doesn't allow inter-device communication. It's segregated on the network. So it's kind of like a cafe where you can't hack someone else's computer or something because they're all separated. Um, and that means if you're going to be using this printer in any kind of uh, public setting or set place where you've got a Nest Wi-Fi or some sort of Wi-Fi network that has a very high security, you won't most likely be able to connect through the Wi-Fi, which is unfortunate, um, but that's not Robox's fault. That's just how Wi-Fi networks work. So don't worry about that. We'll get over that. So we connected it to Science24, which is our other Wi-Fi network, which is what you saw on the screen. And once it was connected to Science24, we got an IP address, which you can see up here. So 10.1.181.112, that's the internal IP address for this printer. 
So to connect to the printer is a remarkably simple process. You go to your computer, you load up Automaker, and I'm going to switch to a uh, screen recording now. So once you're on Automaker, you're going to want to click on the gear icon in the top hand corner, and you're going to want to click on Network. You've got lots of other settings, but you want Network. And once you go to Network, here is a little box where you type in the IP address that was on the printer screen. Now remember to make sure that you're on the same Wi-Fi network as the printer. And then you type in the IP address. So for my printer it's 10.1.181.112 And when I click add device it should detect the printer. So I've switched to a microphone with better sound quality and without the background noise. Um, and what I'm going to be doing now is typing in the pin, which is 1234 for my printer. And it allows me to connect straight to the printer. Now that you've connected, you'll see two options to disconnect or launch device manager. And obviously disconnect does what you think it would do. Um, but launch device manager is pretty interesting because it loads up a web-based copy of the screen on the printer. So if you type in the pin again, you then have a one-to-one -one replica of the screen on the printer now accessible on your computer, which makes using the printer's interface far more convenient and far more pleasant. You can see your, you have all the general settings, same stuff as on the screen, but just you have a keyboard and mouse to be able to interact with it. So now we've clicked back, we can see full access to the printer through Automaker, just as we would have with the original Robox. You have the image of it, you have all the controls over the various things, it shows you if the door is opened or closed, as you can see by me opening and closing the door. Um, now, one thing that I experienced recently was the printer serial number corrupted, and it ended up showing an original Robox on the screen even though it's the Robox Pro. So if that happens, uh, call Robox and have a chat with them. There's not much I can do about that. But when you connect to Pro, it should show the image of the Pro. When you connect the original, it should show you an image of the original. So that's how to connect to the Robox Pro through Wi-Fi and how to use the various features available to you through the Wi-Fi connection. Thank you for watching.